Hey there, welcome back, Alex Lyon here. Today we're talking about social exchange theory from Altman and Taylor, but we are working out of B.B. and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. So let's get into the details. So Altman and Taylor gave us this social exchange theory, and it's really implies this economic exchange or as a metaphor for how we make decisions about the relationships and the groups that we participate in. So the theory explains human behavior in relationships in terms of costs, rewards, profits, and losses. So costs would be the mental effort it takes to be in a group or a relationship. There is some anxiety or potential embarrassment, time, effort, frustration. In other words, you have to put out effort and energy into any relationship, and those are costs. That's something that you have to put up with, I guess you could say. But there are also rewards, which is why we get in relationships at all. There's pleasurable outcomes like fellowship, companionship, belonging, satisfaction, possibly achievement and status, depending upon the kinds of relationships and groups that you are in. And here's how the theory essentially works. We are looking for profits. In other words, more rewards than costs. And we're trying to avoid losses, which is more costs than rewards. The bottom line is the theory predicts that as long as the rewards outweigh the cost, then the relationship or your group membership will continue. It'll be profitable and you'll stay in that relationship or the group. If, however, the costs outweigh the rewards and then you get those losses, then you will not likely stay in the group. Now, I want to make a note that Altman and Taylor are not saying this is how you should line up all your relationships and with pencil and paper figure out the costs and rewards. What they're saying is this, when they observe people, this is how we decide what relationships to be involved in and not. We tend to evaluate the costs and rewards. In fact, you may have done this, right? You may have met somebody new or joined a group and after a little bit of experience, you may have decided, you know what? I just don't think this is worth it. I don't think I'm gonna be involved in this because you're thinking it's the costs are too high. You don't maybe use those words where you think it's not worth it or I don't have time for that, right? But other times you find yourself wanting to show up and wanting to hang out with certain people because you anticipate that you will have those rewarding experiences and it will be worth it. It will be worth the time and effort of showing up. There are some additional concepts that are not in the in the B.B. and Masterson book that I'm pulling from M. Griffin's book on first look at communication theory. And the three concepts are the mini-max principle of human behavior. And that is that we, as people, seek to maximize those benefits and minimize our costs. So that is the way we go around and evaluate potential situations. As we go about our day, we're looking for the highest possible rewards and the lowest possible costs. Additionally, we have a concept that's called the comparison level. Think of this as a thermostat. You set your thermostat in your house to a certain level because that's the cutoff that balances out the maximum amount of comfort with the minimum amount of costs that you are willing to pay. And we have in our minds a comparison level or a thermostat. What level, what mixture of costs and rewards are we willing to put up with in relationships that we have? So you might not have any other relationships, but you may meet somebody and you may decide, oh, I don't think I could put up with that kind of behavior from a person, or I can't take that drama, I don't need any more drama in my life. You just have a comparison level, it's a gauge that you use to evaluate your choices about group membership, about relationships. There's also something called a comparison level alternative, and this has to do with other alternative relationships that are available, potentially. This is where we look for the best possible available outcomes in other relationships. So this is why, for example, people are more likely to leave a job or a relationship. It's when they have a better job or a better relationship waiting for them. There's an alternative, a comparison level, but there's an actual alternative. People will tend not to quit their job if they don't have another one lined up. People are less likely, the research shows, to leave a relationship unless there's another relationship available, presumably what we believe to be a better one. We would never leave a good relationship 
for one that we know is going to be bad, but you anticipate that the other one will be more profitable. Comparison level alternative. I think that's fascinating. So again, Altman and Taylor are not saying this is how you should live your life. They're just describing the way people do live their lives. They're observing and explaining the way we make decisions and an economic metaphor is one of those ways to make sense of our relationship choices. So question of the day, can you think of a particularly costly or rewarding relationship that you have had in the past? And I would love to hear about it in the comment section below. Of course, don't name names. We're not here to make anybody else look bad. Keep it anonymous. But if you have a relationship where this theory resonates and makes sense, we would love to hear about it below. And I look forward to reading those comments. So thanks, and I will see you next time.